What's up, carpoolers? Welcome back to another episode of Riding Shotgun with Corduroy Paco. This young man looks a bit familiar to me. Let's give him a lift. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Really needed a lift. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Wheezy Waiter. Hi. In the vlogging unit. This is the vlogging unit? Yeah, the mobile vlogging unit. Okay, because <laughs> unit can refer to something else. Yes, right. and that's that's a different video. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Fresh, fresh, yeah. recently How made fries. Yes, you too. Those are the best. And I just dropped all the food. <laughs> oh, we're good, we're good. So you and I, we've just met each other. We're brand new friends. Best friends. Best friends. <laughs> what is your background? Like, you know, from little Craig, to Big Craig. Well, I grew up in a little farm town called, well, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called, okay? That's not your business. You know, grew up in this tiny town of 2,000 people. I played sports, I was in drama, I did everything, because you could do everything in a tiny town, and it meant nothing, really. <laughs> but, went to college for radio, television, film uh, in UW-Madison, which is not known for its uh, production media production it's more like <laughs> film theory and stuff so I learned about film history and a few production classes and editing classes did you get your hands on a little like, bit I, my, I put my hands on everything there's a bunch of uh, editing I've done I did while there and also a lot of creative writing classes I took a lot of creative writing in the English department even though I wasn't an English major while there met some dudes we started a band called Driftless Pony Club Decided when we graduated to move to the nearest big city, so we moved to Chicago. I became a waiter while the band was playing shows and stuff and not succeeding, pretty much. Got kind of frustrated that I wasn't using my skills that I learned, and I, I've, and I loved making short, silly videos, so I decided to just do it for free. No one paying me and put it up online, which led to a job with this web design company in Chicago doing video which led to just doing video full-time on YouTube, which led to me sitting in a car, eating a burger, and drinking Diet Coke nice. in Canada. I have an important question for you, though, yeah. before you go on. Uh, when you eat fries, do you eat single fry at a time, or do you grab a bunch? And grab drink? a bunch. Yeah, it's, me too. Yeah. I think most people do. Tell me in the comments. So you can say that, and people will tell you something in the comments. <laughs> I was like, yeah, tell me what, you're th you know, what do you think of it? And it's like, mm -hmm. you're crickets. <laughs> Well, crickets, I have opinions, too. So for when you got onto YouTube, how did that come about? Well, Zay Frank, if you are familiar with Zay Frank, mm -hmm. he's a video blogger. He did he did a series of videos. Not He didn't do them on YouTube. He did them around the time when YouTube started. He started on his own blog making videos. And he did them every weekday, and it was like a lot of current events, a lot of inside jokes, a lot of zany humor. And I thought, I could do that. I could try to do that. So I tried, and I did a lot of videos, not even using YouTube for a while, without anyone really watching except friends and family. But uh, I loved it. I, did, I loved doing it, even though no one was really watching. So I just continued. By the time I got to my like 100th video, uh, I was working at the internet company that I mentioned at the time, doing videos in the morning before I went to work, because I saw it just seemed like it was working. And um, my 100th video is when I finally got attention from like a larger, the larger YouTube community and discovered the community and what I discovered what a nerd fighter was. I never had a viral video, I've never had a video that blew up, but I, I uh, found this website called YouTube Reviewed and they don't, it doesn't exist anymore. But I sent them a message saying, hey, I said something about their website. And then through that, they checked out my videos and loved them and wrote a whole big article. And uh, it wasn't an extremely popular website, but a guy by the name of Corporal Cadet uh, is a YouTuber from New Zealand. Who tweet, he, he saw the article, tweeted about me. He had like... 20,000 subscribers or something and I woke up the next day to 97 emails and uh, was flipping out I can imagine. <laughs> from that point on like the next then throughout the next week I got like a thousand subscribers vlog got in contact with the vlog brothers because I discovered what a nerd fighter was and I'm like hey I see that nerd fighters are following me 
they, they liked my stuff. And then John Green read it and checked out my videos. From that point, they kind of helped me along. Throughout that year, I made videos like two, three a week, I think. And I got to like 16,000 subscribers. Beginning of the next year, 2010, I was determined to make it my full-time job. So I I said, I told my audience, this is a long story. Jeez. No, it's awesome. Jeez. No, no, don't even. I told my, I told my audience um, that if I get to, uh, this, is, this is beautiful. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful Hamilton, yes. Yeah. Oh, I should have taken you a different way. <laughs> I know, I kind of like, I like it. It's really industrial and pollute, polluted, but, right, <laughs> but, it, but it looks cool. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I told my audience I'm going to do a video every weekday for a month, and if I get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the month, I will make a video every weekday for the rest of the year. And I didn't get to 100,000 subscribers, but I got to like 40,000, 40, 42. So I almost more than doubled my subscribers. And I thought, wow, this is really working. So I just continued throughout the rest of the year. And by like August, I was able to quit my job. I got like at like 70,000 subscribers or something and continued doing this full time. So what was that like, being able to say like YouTube is now my career? Um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really awesome. Being my own boss to, is something I've always wanted. I, hate, I hated adhering to a set schedule that was just set arbitrarily set by someone else and having to go into a place that I didn't really feel in working on stuff that I didn't really care that much about. I hope my boss doesn't see this. My former <laughs> boss. Being my own boss, getting up whenever I want is nice, but the downsides are being your own boss, you have to force yourself to do the work. And I learned to not just sleep in as long as I, I want every day because <laughs> then you don't get things done. And you can easily, can easily if you let it slide too much, it'll go away. <laughs> you won't be able to do it anymore. Do you ever find it tricky to get going, and how do you get around it? That happens all the time. That, um, uh, and lately, even more so, because now the more videos I make, the harder it is to make something I haven't done before. Yeah. And so I don't even try to make something I haven't done before, really. I just try to do what I think is cool in that moment. Yeah. Almost every day I'll wake up and be like, what am I going to do today? I have no idea. I'm, just, I'm terrified. I'm never going to do a video today. <laughs> uh, but somehow if you, if i just sit there and think about it for a while or read the news or read comments with the mindset that i'm going to have something done by the end of that day somehow something will click and and be like okay yeah this could happen and then and then it leads to something else in my mind and then this could happen and then this could happen and then the video is done that that that, that doesn't always happen either some days i nothing comes to me and then uh and then i just start I just start making a video without even knowing what it's going to be. Like, I think up one joke, one thing that I think will be funny, and just build off of it. I think the stereotype about people on YouTube is like, oh, just a kid with a camera phone just yeah. putting something up. But you're getting taken seriously for what you do. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> How did you make that switch? Um, I didn't... I just continued trying to grow my audience, and people found me. I didn't really seek, out, seek that out. For me, it's all, it's all, the main focus, the most important focus is just the creating entertainment and doing the best I can at that, and then good things happen if I do, if I do it well, I guess. And I didn't know that alleys like this existed in Canada. Yeah, we built this one just for this. This is my okay. set, this is the back lot. Oh, so wow. It's just plywood. Wow. And, yeah. So you're like a billionaire. Yeah, you know, not anymore because of this, but, <laughs> yeah. but I was. So if you can, give me your life story or describe yourself with five words. Midwestern, charming, hairy, hardworking clown. <laughs> wow. That's the best so far. That is the best so far. <laughs> All right, so Craig, it seems to be getting pretty dark. And this is uh -huh. kind of a sketchy area, so I don't really want to be here okay. too long. Well, yeah, we should probably. So, uh, all right, I guess I'll drop you off right here then. What? what? Yeah, this is good, right? Like, we got this place here, it looks Dude, kind of open. This but... isn't where I'm going. Well, uh, well, it's not where I'm going either, though. Where, where are we? If anyone asks, like, there's a there's a P with a, a line through it. If you need a cab or something, they can probably they'll probably know that. That's, right? that's no that parking up. sign. Yeah, so then I better get moving. So, but anyway, thanks a lot. I hope you know 
I'm glad we're finally I'm friends. A... It's... I'm calling a cab. All right, cool, man. Tell him hello for me. Oh, crap, my phone's on. On behalf of me and my good, good buddy, Craig, remember, check your mirrors.